We're going to talk about Homeland Security in our first person segment this week. Senator Tom Carper of Delaware is here. He is the top Senate Democrat now in the minority on the Homeland Security Committee. Senator, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, next week, a deadline for funding for the Homeland Security Agency. Why are we facing another funding crisis like this? Well, normally we fund our government. The federal government uh, fiscal year starts, as you know, October 1st, and it runs until September 30th. We have funded the entire rest of the federal government through September 30th. The, uh, our Republican friends in the House and Senate are unhappy with the president's use of executive orders to provide, um, uh, to stop the deportation of a couple of a million people that are here uh, illegally, young people, people who came here as minors, uh, in some cases their parents. The uh, Republicans are not happy with that and uh, wish the president hadn't used his executive powers to, to delay, if you will, the deportation of uh, a number of these people. Th to my Republican friends, I say, if you're unhappy about that, do two things. One, go ahead and fund this, this uh, department, which is responsible for securing our borders, making sure their airplanes are safe, uh, intercepting uh, d drug dealers that coming into this country, bringing in people to this country, uh, helping to control Ebola. Uh, why c cut off the funding for that department? It's crazy. If you have a problem with what the president's done, go to court. Just go to That's what the states have done. And they've won a, a minor uh, victory down in a district court in Texas. That's the right thing to do. The other thing to do, pass, say, an immigration bill. We, we passed one in the Senate by a two-to-one margin, Democrat and Republican support. Uh, it reduced the budget deficit, it enhanced uh, GDP growth. Um, it uh, didn't give people amnesty, but it, uh, for some people, it put them on a path pathway behind everybody else who's here legally to maybe move toward a, uh, a legal status. The, uh, but this is, not, this is not the way to do it. This is not the way to do you it. You were recently in, in Texas uh, mm -hmm. at the border to kind of kind of get a look at things. Something that, that surprised you or something you realized uh, in that trip that you didn't really know about the way border security is being done? I, I've been down on the border uh, quite a bit from uh, the uh, uh, Pacific Ocean, San Diego, all the way to the Gulf Coast and through Arizona. And, and my responsibilities as chairman of the Homeland Security Committee. The, uh, I was reminded, of, uh, not, not surprised by anything, reminded of some things. One is we can put as many men and women on Border Patrol uh, across our border. We've got 40,000 down there. And it's about, about one about it roughly every half mile. Uh, we can do that till the cows come home. But the real, there's really two keys here. Don't just put more men and women down there. Uh, use what I call uh, a technology. Technology is the key to a better, uh, maybe I'll use the term for, force multipliers, drones. Uh, to, for, to surveil the border. Uh, we have these, uh, we used to have these big uh, dirigibles that we would use in Afghanistan, we call them tethered aerostats. They're actually t uh, tethered to the ground. They go up 1,000 feet, 10,000 feet. And they can see four miles very clearly, they have great technology, great cameras, great, uh, great uh, radars. And use that kind of technology, deploy that kind of technology. That way we can better deploy the, uh, the men and women that we have on the border patrol. So technology is a key. I heard that again and again and again. So the other thing is, it's a, we can, again, we can have, we can put another half trillion, quarter trillion dollars in the border security down there. The real key is uh, addressing the underlying causes, the root causes. The reason why hundreds of thousands of people have come out of the Guatemala, Salvador, and Honduras in recent years is because they live hellacious lives. They live lives of misery, which we help to con contribute to. Our drug habits, addiction to drugs, the, the drug cartels uh, control parts of those state, those countries down there. We're part of the, the, the problem. And uh, they need to address corruption. They need to address lack of hope, lack of uh, economic opportunity. We need to help them. And it's like in Home Depot ads. You know the Home Depot ads that says, you can do it, we can help. That's it. They can do it, we can help. And they want, they want our help, and it shouldn't be all on us. It's us, it's Mexico, it's Colombia, and American Development Banks, nonprofits. And to, to help them deal with their problems, that more than anything else would, uh, would, would, uh, would uh, stop the flow of uh, illegal immigrants and enable us to deploy our 40,000 uh, men and women on the border in more thoughtful, smart ways. In this whole debate, we hear the name uh, Ted Cruz come up a lot. In your opinion, is he impeding the work of the Senate? Mm, I, don't, I don't know that he's much of a player. He's every, almost everything he does relates to running for president. And uh, so, go Ted, go. <laughs> Uh, earlier Actually, ironically, Ted's, uh, Ted's grandmother was from here. I think she was one of 17 children. Right. And so his family has some roots here in, in Wilmington, uh, Wilmington, Delaware. I think his mom might have actually grown, uh, grown up here. But in, in terms of his actually making a contribution in, in the Senate, uh, he's been here a couple of years now. I've not seen it. But uh, uh, he's, uh, he's pretty good at getting attention. And uh, what he wants to do is be president. Uh, the, the key thing for a president is to be able to get people to work together. 
That's, that's the most important thing maybe that a president can do, not just the House and the Senate, Democrats and Republicans, but to get a country to pull together in the same direction. What I've seen uh, from him doesn't suggest that he, he may have many qualities, he may be smart, but that's not one of the qualities I've seen uh, demonstrated so far. Earlier this week, uh, House Speaker John Boehner was saying he was willing to let the funding run out, and then uh, Florida Senator Marco Rubio said, fund the agency and, and don't fight over immigration. It's kind of hard to understand why we're having this argument. Do you understand? Yeah, the Republican, uh, Republicans are divided. There is not a monolith for them, but they have some pe people with different points of, of, of view. Um, the, uh, one of the, I think Republicans learned a tough lesson a number of years ago when Bill Clinton was president. They shut down the government. didn't go well for them. And the, the idea of shutting down the Department of Homeland Security, what do you do? You say to 50,000 uh, TSA screeners and so forth, we want you to come to work. Uh, we're not going to pay you. What do you say to 40,000 people who are patrolling our borders and making them secure? We want you to come to work. We're not going to pay you. They already have low morale there. Uh, one of the things we've learned, we had a really good hearing about a year or so ago in my, my committee, and uh, we just looked at the cost to the taxpayers of stop and go government, shutting down. A good example, where, uh, the Coast Guard needs to upgrade their fleet. They've got uh, a new cutter that's being built. They have a, a negotiated price with the contractor. If uh, we tell basically say to the contractor, uh, I know we have this contract with you, I know we're supposed to be paying you, we're not going to be able to do that. The contractor has to lay off people, they have every, all the people assembled to build the ship, they have uh, the technology, all the supplies and the parts and everything, and they'll, they'll build a ship, you know, when we finally fund, the, the, fund it, but not at the same price. We got a good price, uh, the next price won't be as good. So it's just a wasteful way to run, run, run our government. So finally, uh, a prediction for the way this all plays out? I think at the end of the day, what happens, I hope the Republicans, uh, and there, there are very good people in the Republican Party as well as some who are not as thoughtful. And, uh, but uh, my hope is those that are thoughtful in that party will uh, basically say to their colleagues, look, why don't we do this? Why don't we uh, use the courts? If we don't like what their president has done, let's go through the courts and take it uh, that way. Let's let the people of the Department of Homeland Security do their job to, to secure our borders, to secure our country, to make us uh, safer. And let's work with the Democrats and the president to pass the kind of comprehensive immigration reform legislation that we passed a year and a half ago, which reduced the budget deficit by some $900 billion over the next 20 years, which grew gross domestic product by 5% over the next uh, 20 years, and which provided a legal way for people in other countries to come here and work uh, for a while and go back to their countries. Most, most of them don't want to come here and live. They like to be able to come here and work for a short period of time. Why don't we let them do that? All right, Senator Tom Carper of Delaware, we appreciate you coming here to explain this to us. This first-person interview can be found at newsworks.org slash Delaware.